Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Lipakshi Kurana. Here are the top stories we're tracking for you on Monday, the 4th of June. India expresses commitment towards enriching intra-BRICS cooperation. Terrorist hurl grenade at police party in India's German Kashmir 8 injured. And at least 14 killed in suicide bomb attack on gathering of Afghan clerics. And now for all the details, Indian Foreign Minister Sushma Swaraj on Monday expressed India's willingness to contribute towards enriching intra-BRICS cooperation further. She made the remarks while addressing the meeting of BRICS foreign ministers in South Africa. The meeting is expected to lay the foundation for the annual summit of the grouping in Johannesburg next month. Indian Foreign Minister Sushma Swaraj attended the meeting of BRICS foreign ministers in South Africa's Johannesburg city on Monday. The summit is expected to lay the foundation for the annual summit of the grouping in Johannesburg next month. While addressing the meeting, Swaraj expressed India's willingness to contribute towards enriching intra-BRICS cooperation further. She called for joint action of the BRICS nations against challenges to long-term growth and reiterated India's commitment to joint counter-terrorism efforts. We reiterate our commitment to implement our leaders' mandate on counter-terrorism under South Africa's BRICS chairmanship. BRICS cooperation in strategic areas of security, counter-terrorism, UN reforms, peacekeeping, de-radicalization, cyber security, energy security, Global governance and international and regional hotspot issues are deliberated in detail during our NSA's meetings. Suraj so earlier on Sunday called on South African President Cyril Ramaphosa to boost bilateral relations between India and South Africa. During her five day visit, she is also scheduled to chair a meeting of foreign ministers of IPSA, that is, India, Brazil, and South Africa, another bloc working to deepen coordination among the three countries on major global issues. Terrorists hurled a grenade on a police party in Shopia district of India's northern German Kashmir province, injuring at least eight people, including a constable. The incident came just days after three army personnel were injured in a blast in the district on May 29th. At least eight people were injured after terrorists hurled a grenade at a police party in Shofian district of India's northern German Kashmir province on Monday. Police said that the grenade exploded in Batapura Chowk in the district, leaving seven civilians and one constable injured. The injured were immediately rushed to a nearby hospital for medical treatment while investigation into the matter has been initiated. The incident comes a week after three army personnel were injured in an improvised explosive device or IED blast in Sofian on May 29. India accuses Pakistan of training and arming militants and helping them infiltrate across the border to spread unrest in Kashmir Valley. Moving on, journalists in the illegally occupied region of Pakistan administered Kashmir are going through an existential crisis as they're getting meager and sometimes even zero remuneration for the relentless execution of duties. The journalists complain of not having any proper mechanism and a wage ward which could determine their basic salaries. Journalists who are often called the messenger of people's plight to the government are themselves bearing the brunt of the rapidly deteriorating economics in their field in Pakistan-administered Kashmir. They are now finding it difficult to sustain in the industry which is marred by corruption and immoral practices. The journalists in the illegally occupied region allege that there is no proper mechanism which could determine their basic salaries. आजाद कश्मीर में बदकिस्मती से वेज बोर्ड तो दूर की बात यहां के जर्नलिस्ट को तनख्वाहों का तायन करने के लिए भी अभी तक कोई मैकेनिज्म तैयार नहीं हो सका उनकी हेल्थ की सहूलतें दीगर सहूलतें तो अपनी जगह लेकिन उनकी फैमिली के जो मामलात हैं उनके ओवर टाइम का जो मसला है उन सारे इश्यूज को बिल्कुल एक साइड पर रख के अगर आप देखें तो वो जो बुनियादी कम अज कम उजरत है आजाद कश्मीर के साफियों को वो भी नहीं मिलती 
Journalists in the region are even dictated the editorial and morals of the story. They blame they are coerced into creating propaganda and narratives that do not have even remote association with the facts, failing which either they are thrown out of the job or implicated on false charges and even in some cases killed. In news from Afghanistan, a suicide bomber on Monday killed at least 14 people near the entrance to a two-day peace gathering of Muslim clerics in Afghan capital, Kabul. The bomb exploded at the entrance to a giant tent near residential buildings in the west of Kabul after most of the clerics had left. More than 2,000 religious scholars from across the country began a meeting on Sunday at the Loya Zirga or Grand Council Meet, denouncing years of conflict. They had issued a fatwa or religious ruling outlawing suicide bombings and demanding that Taliban militants restore peace to allow foreign troops to leave. No group immediately claimed responsibility for the attack, which underlines deteriorating security ahead of parliamentary and district council elections set for October 20th. More news from Afghanistan. Afghanistan's security institutions on Sunday confirmed that fatalities among the Afghan security forces have significantly increased during the current fighting season compared to previous years. To curb the increase in fatalities across the country, additional police and commando forces have been deployed to the front lines, the Interior Ministry said. The security institutions in Afghanistan on Sunday confirmed that fatalities among the Afghan security members have significantly increased during the current fighting season compared to previous years in the country. This comes at a time when the terror group Taliban has expanded its military offensives on multiple fronts across Afghanistan. Afghan Interior Ministry said currently security forces are tackling insurgents as part of their pre-planned operations in at least 14 provinces and that additional troops have been deployed to the front line in order to curb the increase in fatalities. Meanwhile, lawmakers in the lower house of country's parliament have raised concerns over seizing of military equipment and ammunition by the Taliban in Farah and Ghajni provinces. However, the Ministry of Defense has rejected such reports. A UNICEF report released on Sunday said the ongoing conflict, poverty and discrimination in Afghanistan has left nearly half of children out of school. According to the report, girls account for 60% of the out-of-school population, putting them at a particular disadvantage and compounding gender-based discrimination. UNICEF on Sunday released a report stating ongoing conflict, poverty and discrimination has left nearly half of children out of school in Afghanistan. The report said Afghan children aged between 7 and 17 years old are missing out on school. The ongoing conflict and worsening security situation across the country, combined with deeply ingrained poverty and discrimination against girls, have pushed the rate of out-of-school children up for the first time since 2002 levels, the report stated. Some of the worst affected provinces across Afghanistan include Kandahar, Helmand, Zabul, where up to 85% of girls are not going to school. While the numbers are concerning, there is also progress and hope. The study notes that school dropout rates are low. 85% of boys and girls who start primary school go on to complete the last grade, while 95% of boys and 90% of girls who start lower secondary also complete the grades. Now, the challenge in the country is only to get children to start school in the first place, for which the UNICEF report calls for continued government and civil society commitment and action to address the out-of-school children, especially girls. A differently abled man in India's southern Kerala province has become a source of inspiration for others. Taha, who lost a movement in his legs years ago after being paralyzed on surviving a deadly fall, earns his livelihood by making umbrellas and other products. A differently abled man in India's southern Trivandrum city has become a source of inspiration for others by sewing umbrellas making paper bags, bulbs and everything he can to earn a livelihood. <laughs> Taha lost movement in his legs 17 years ago after being paralysed on surviving a deadly fall. 
The fall confined Thaha to bed for years, but five years ago he gathered his strength and learned to make umbrellas and other products. Soon he began taking orders and selling the products online. His immaculate work is now a hit among the buyers. Thaha says he also counsels other differently abled people and tells them not to waste life in depression. He is grateful for the life he has now and the stuff he can do like driving his especially modified car and actively working for two charity groups where they provide food and medicine to senior citizens and orphan kids. Tourists are thronging to Himalayan Desert Leh in India's northern German Kashmir province to beat the scorching heat. The breathtakingly beautiful desert city is located in the lap of Himalayas and has clear blue waters. The picturesque Himalayan desert lay in India's northern Chimu in Kashmir province is attracting a lot of tourists from all over the country. Tourists can be seen clicking photos and enjoying with girls at the turquoise blue lake of Bangong Seoul in the lap of the Himalayas. Located at over 17,000 feet above the sea level, the temperature at Leh is more pleasant and people from all over the country looked at the hill town to beat the intense heat. मैंने आज तक इतना नजारा कहीं नहीं देखा आया या देख पोंगोंग लेक पे खड़ा हूँ तो ऐसा मैं नहीं लगता कोई वर्ल्ड में और कहीं होगा और इतना हैप्पी और इतना हम इधर पीस भी आके जो पीपल है इतने पीसफुल है टूरिज्म इन द एरिया प्रिंग्स विद इट अनदर चैलेंज ऑफ क्लीनलीनेस सेड लोकल काउंसिलर कॉन्चॉक स्टैंडिंग जैसे यहाँ पे ज़्यादातर टूरिस्ट जो है पेंगुंग के लिए आते पेंगुंग देखने के लिए आते हैं तो इसमें मेन रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी यह ये होता है कि एक तो सफाई रखने का तो जितने भी जो टूरिस्ट आते हैं एक तरीके से जो टूरिस्ट आते हैं वो यहाँ पे जो एंजॉय करने के लिए आते The geoclimatic conditions, the landscape, culture and tradition have been reasons that the tourism industry has flourished in the area. A charitable trust inaugurated an affordable food bank for the underprivileged in India's northern Kanpur city on Sunday. The gesture aims to provide food to the homeless and those who can't afford a proper meal. Rakshak Ki Rasoi or Saviour's Kitchen, an initiative by a charity organization Rakshak Sansthan, inaugurated an affordable food bank for the underprivileged in India's northern Kanpur city on Sunday. The Saviour's Kitchen claims to provide a plate of curry rice for a mere 7 cents and a complete meal including rice, curry, vegetables and chapati for 22 cents. Kali Chawal Vitrit Karne Ke Hii Vyavsha Ki Hai Jis Me 5 Rupai Pe Garibho Ko Steel Ki Plato Me Bhojan Milega 15 Rupai Me Uska Thal Milega Thanda Pani Aur Sarvat Ki Vyavsha Fri Hai Ye Karkram the venue was thronged by laborers and homeless mostly who queued up for the meal at the stalls on the inauguration day. India is home to countrywide mega kitchens mostly sponsored by religious organizations. The country depends largely on monsoon for its crop produce. Production of food grain achieved record production of 234.47 million tons in 2008 to 2009. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianNewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com/SasiaNewsline and follow us on Twitter at SasiaNewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night.